Mr. Goodies, you are the communication officer of Sekoda Housing Europe from Brussels, and you are also an activist talking about the future prospects of the European youth. We have also to discuss new models of solidarity amongst the European countries. One key issue is also labor migration. What problems does this bring about? That's not a simple question because the reasons are very different from country to country. The main problem is that mobility, which is a very good idea initially in Europe, and it's one of the advantages of the European Union, the fact that we can all find a job wherever we want in the European Union, is not an option in many countries. That was the main discussion point, I think, as well, uh, over our controversy. And we have to make it into an option. We don't have to force people to move out of their countries, especially from the Mediterranean countries, to look for a job and to find one and to, so that they can build a better future. Because, um, I mean, if you don't have it as an option, but you're forced to move, then that's not very solidary. And that's uh, the ultimate goal in the end. I know you work in Brussels, but coming from Greece, where do you see the biggest mistakes in policy making so far uh, regarding employment for young people? The biggest problem I think everybody now knows, because Greece has been in the front pages for several years now, is the fact that Greece has had a huge public sector providing just services and people were finding jobs not in the best possible way. I mean, uh, political relations and polit political identity has been a really important factor to find the job in the public sector. And this has been a bubble. Not just the housing market has been a bubble, but also the public sector has proven to be uh, a bubble. And uh, p the country has been left with no alternative. I mean, the private sector was not solid enough to, to react to the crisis. And now that the crisis came, cuts and austerity are everywhere. And uh, the public sector uh, is facing these cuts, but the private sector is not strong enough. Uh, to uh, promote uh, employment and to give uh, job opportunities not only to young people but to everyone in Greece because unemployment is not about just about youth in Greece. Of course, youth unemployment is our focus point today but there is a bigger, a wider unemployment issue not only in Greece but in most uh, crisis-ridden countries. Which further steps are necessary to improve the situation? Well, I think that the EU is showing that through its cohesion policy, it's trying to make some steps uh, towards a better future for everyone and to close the gap that the crisis has widened again. But the, the thing is, where to? Where the money should be invested and how the money, the, these investments should be regulated and controlled. Because after all, the cohesion policy has worked quite well, in my point of view, uh, over the last 20 years. But there was no control and the European funds coming to Greece and other countries were not very well spent. What are your expectations towards the European Union? I think in some uh, cases we have to get back to basics as well and that's what I'm expecting from Europe because we see like in different countries there are really basic problems like people don't have access to adequate or affordable housing, people are excluded, young people mainly are excluded from education, people are, excluding, are excluded from employment and social uh, security uh, rights so we have to face these issues and try to find the best possible solutions for them. It's not just about youth unemployment to find the, be the best possible scheme, but in many, many countries we have to see that it's a chain reaction and that a much more complex issue and we have to adapt to the uh, problems in every country because you can't have like, of course, we all see it's a common European problem. Crisis is, of course, a pan-European issue, but it has so many aspects that are not that common. And we have to adapt better um, to each uh, country, to the profiles of each country to come to a better solution. Is the multi-billion training and education package a good solution? I think it, it, 
it wants to be <laughs> a real solution. It can be a real solution, but only in some of the countries where there is infrastructure to build upon. I mean, in Nordic countries, in Central European countries, in Germany, in Sweden, in Denmark, there is infrastructure in education, in the labor market to use such schemes like the youth guarantee or to work on vocational training even more and to come to better results. But on, in other countries like Greece, where uh, universities and schools are facing such big problems, where the labor market is deregulated totally and where we you have like uh, unemployment rates of 25 to 30 percent, you can just have a scheme and try to use it because it was a best practice in another country and think that you're going to come to the same solutions. No, it doesn't work like that, I'm afraid. So, of course, it's a very good thing. It's a nice thing to have the money and the will, most of all, to invest in the in a, most, a more prosper uh, future for the Europe's youth. But on the other hand, there is no common solution because, as said before, the profile of every country is much different and the needs demand adaptable solutions.